I understand they thought I was having some weird warped uh, dream about, you know, <laughs> how I viewed my father, uh, you know, in a precarious situation. So, you know, we were always, we were the film kids, like the circus kids. You know, as I grew up on, I grew up on the back of a dolly, for sure. My mom would go, uh, she taught figure skating twice a week, so on Mondays and Wednesdays, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't babysit, well, she couldn't parent me, so I would go to the set, right, yeah. and I would ride the back of the dolly while my dad was shooting. And I remember, actually, I remember, you know, Bill White Sr., and I remember, uh, who was that great gaffer, Cookie Monster, I can't remember. I called him Cookie Monster, because he always took me to craft service, and he always gave me, uh, you know, treats. And Duncan. Duncan, yeah. Duncan McGregor. No, Duncan was here. No, this was way back in Boy. the 60s. Anyway, so Rudy Kirschu, yeah, just the Bavarian guy. Yeah, so I grew, I grew up. It was part of my language, you know. Do you remember your first flight out here? You must have been what five or six when you guys were moving out here. Yeah, we traveled a lot because we would go wherever, um, wherever Dad was. Mom would pick us up, and we would, my sister and I would travel. And but we didn't. Uh, we moved out to Vancouver. Well, it was very funny. After high school, I wanted to go to UBC because we were still in Toronto. So now we're talking about 84, 85. And my parents said, that's too far. We'll never see you. So I ended up going to McGill. And the day I started at McGill, my dad got his first MOW in Vancouver. And within a year, they were basically out here eight to nine months a year. Now I'm in Montreal. <laughs> so we got, uh, you know, quite separated. So then they ended up having an apartment here in Kitsilano basically from like 1985, 86 mm -hmm. on. And then I moved out in 2005. Uh, my mother and father started a, com a commercial house called Scholar Productions. And... Um, or was it Laszlo George Productions? No, yeah, Scholar Arts Production. Scholar and it was the Production. only production house, um, camera only. So I don't finish anything. You can take it New York everywhere to edit. Because when I was working for other cor corporations, the client said, why don't you do it yourself? Why don't you get a company? And, and I said, okay, it's for camera work only. You hire the director, I shoot it, and after the negative is yours, you can take it and work. It went to editing, to Madrid, went to editing in New York. Madrid was a big deal, Spain, because that's when all the sound production was there. Uh, I don't know because of the union or not, but all the uh, music behind the movie for 150 orchestra, there was hardly any money in Madrid, but you cannot do it in Toronto or New York. So all the music was done in Spain. Now the IMAX is, uh, I tell you, we were, we were at the, uh, the show and we saw it as beautiful. I said, this is IMAX. So I wrote a story, basically, I mean, 20 minutes, and presented to the Ontario place. And I got a million dollars to produce it. That they had that sort of money. Now, the problem was, they had to be ready by May, but they bought it in January. So there's no way I can film it in the winter. So we went down to the Mendocino River down in California. And I was on the helicopter for 20 days outside, yeah. standing on a skid, <laughs> you know, rope and everything. So I wanted, it was open. I mean, come on, the camera was out here. Right? And I did area shot, fantastic stunt, the area shot, beautiful. So, and I had another c pilot with a double decker who is uh, double planes uh, who followed on the top. So I had a story basically. And one poem, what I find that uh, Lynch's- My sister, yeah, my sister studied it in school and she was memorizing it in the kitchen and it was high flight. I said, I like that uh, poem. Yeah, the poem's Oh, I love this early one. Yeah. Way. So what's happened, just the poem and music. Now, I know Hagut Hardy that time because Hagut Hardy's daughter was the same, same class as yeah, me. Yeah, it was at so my Hager. sister's school. So Hagut said, I'd like to have a music for that. That was beautiful. So, so we did this. And I tell you, the opening night, we invited hundreds of hundreds of pilots. 
all over the world on this island, from Israel, from Africa, everything, Canada, and they couldn't believe what they saw. They couldn't believe. They said, "Oh my God!" Because there's no engine, the glider. Now, it's how you can take the glider up over 30,000 feet above the cloud and start the pouring? Like, yeah. Sure, I mean, they pulled it up in the Cessna. I mean, <laughs> they did this. But these, all my camera work, everything. So, so they won an award, everything. Won, you know, won. I have to ask you, what were these original cameras like, these IMAX cameras? They must have been Hundreds of pounds. Yeah. Hundreds of pounds. Not only that, but the designer, the three guys who designed it, one worked at the... Uh, the bicycle, what's the famous bicycle uh, Schwinn? shop? Schwinn bicycle? Yeah, the bicycle, the bicycle. So the other works on the lenses. So the lens was Hasselblad lens because the 70 millimeter, the Hasselblad lens, like you know, a big, big one. What they use. Um, the magazine is incredible. I mean, the magazine, four people have to lift it up to load it. I mean, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's really, really heavy, heavy, heavy. Now, what's happened is uh, we could get only 35 millimeter back to edit. The print was so expensive that you cannot, you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot afford it. Basically, 35 millimeter. And uh, the film, by the way, is still at the Library of Congress. I mean, a winter time is on. And Reagan showed, because the plane what I used was made in Czechoslovakia. And uh, when uh, the German chancellor came, he has the same plane. So Reagan showed my movie to him <laughs> about this silent sky. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah, movie. Yeah, stunning movie. It's about a glider and an eagle playing uh, tag, tag, basically. Yeah. So I guess a question for Clara. What was it like growing up with a famous father in the business, and you, you coming up to yourself in the business? Well, um, so at that time, there was uh, the film industry, especially in Toronto, and I think here in Vancouver, but um, definitely in Toronto, it was, was very heavy nepotism. There were film families. You know, there were the, there were the Whites, there were the Conies, there were the Goodchilds, there were, you know, people who, multi-generational film technicians. Um, so, and I tried everything not to go into film. I was just, I had no interest <laughs> in it. I didn't want to be part of it. I was going to go into law or something. And same with my sister, but we both ended up in film. She's a set decorator. I'm a producer. Um, and when we started, it, it was surprisingly hard because of we were Laszlo's daughter. Because everyone thought, oh, well, this is just a favor. It's no way they know what they're doing. Okay. You know, so to finally so I couldn't get into any of my dad's shows. I couldn't get into the MOW world. I totally lucked into a job um, actually covering my sister, who had applied for two jobs. And she paid me 50 bucks to pretend I was her to go to the interview on, the <laughs> sec on one of the jobs. Because she wanted to get into art department, but it was an office PA sort of receptionist thing. And she would take it if she couldn't. So anyway, we both got the jobs. So I said, okay, so I started. And I was taking, uh, I just finished university. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was gonna to apply to grad school or something. And then of course, like everybody else, you start getting paid and you're like, oh, okay, this isn't so bad. Mm -hmm. So I started in television, episodic television and uh, on Night Heat actually. Okay. And uh, my dad had never shot episodic television. So I was working with a completely different group of people it was a NABET shoot as opposed to an IA shoot, so Dad had never shot NABET. Um, so people had, didn't really know who Dad was. So it was a little liberating to be able to come up on my own. Um, it didn't last for long, though. Then people started realizing who, who my dad was, which was great, and then um, he started, we started working together. So I started, I was now production managing, um, I was working in Europe, I was working here as well, Mexico, mm -hmm. and my dad would come in and shoot the film. So that was amazing. We got to work together 